Well, Dr. Hannigan, we're very happy to be here with you to talk uh, about our uh, our project. Um, I'm Stephen Hill. This is Carl Prince, and this is Cameron. Uh, I've uh, received a job offer from Ion Flash. I interned with them last summer, and so uh, because of that and the research interests of Cameron, we decided to do a project on uh, low pressure chemical vapor deposition, and uh, our objective was to control the thickness of the silicon dioxide uh, as it grows. Uh, and this is kind of a tricky control problem because it's an integrating system. So we decided by uh, controlling the deposition rate uh, by either manipulating the pressure or the temperature, we would be able to control the overall deposition. Uh, and we wanted to make sure that our model is able to overcome certain disturbances such as fluctuation in pressure or uh, changes in uh, ambient temperature and so yeah and the reason this is important is because we in the in industry uh, you uh, in the semiconductor industry you need to have very precise measurements so uh, an oxide layer really needs to be within a few angstroms if you want the circuitry to to perform properly. Okay, so as you can see from this picture here, <coughs> there's a reaction vessel with a bunch of wafers in and you you pump gases th through them through the, the reaction chamber. The main reactant is tetraethyl <coughs> orthosilicate or TEOS and how the and how this reacts is that it hits the surface of the silicon, silicon and that the surface acts as a catalyst for its decomposition. You the <coughs> then you have silicon dioxide deposit as a thin film layer, sol thin solid film layer, and you have these byproduct gases of water and ethene. And so the right there is the deposition rate oh. for Silicon dioxide is dependent on pressure and the par the partial pressure of TEOS and on temperature. So this was uh, the first Simulink model that we developed. We developed two. Uh, this one manipulated temperature, whereas the other one manipulates pressure. Uh, so as you can see here, we have our set point, uh, which was 100 angstroms. Uh, that goes through a P-only P controller. Uh, which just gives it a gain, gets it into, in, into the right realm. And then we set up a cascade control system to control uh, disturbances of the ambient temperature. Uh, that input gets put into a custom function, uh, which measures the deposition rate. And that comes out and goes into an integrator, which then spits out uh, what our overall deposition is. Uh, and then that goes back over here to this P only controller and we're able to control that that input. Okay, so it was taking us a while to figure out our temperature model. Um, so I went ahead and started deriving a pressure model in the case that we wouldn't figure out the other one, but we ended up finishing them both about the same time. So we have the advantage of, of being able to compare both. So this has a similar uh, function we have we have our set point of 100 angstroms, and our P-only controller controls a valve which um, manipulates the volumetric flow of the TEOS gas coming in. We're also assuming that there is a constant nitrogen flow coming into the vessel as well. So the valve has some dynamics. It takes and the time constant is about two seconds, and we have a gain there as well. And it takes the volumetric flow rate also along with the temperature fluctuations to calculate how many moles of reactant are flowing into the system. Then, uh, with a fairly complicated first principles model involving the reaction rate and the diffusion and mixing um, dynamics along with material balances, we found this transfer function, which gives us the partial pressure with time. This partial pressure along with this same temperature fluctuation spits out a, a reaction rate as, in, as also in the previous model, which is then integrated to uh, display our total accumulation over time. So we have two models here, uh, the results of which we will explain in the further slides. Oh, um, these, these are just the equations. We have this first equation, that was our heat transfer 
our energy balance to derive some of the transfer functions in our first temperature model. Uh, we ended up getting these transfer functions from that. This was our uh, material balance that we used primarily in our uh, pressure model to come up with those transfer functions that we used there. So. so these are the results from our temperature model. As you can see, there's a very linear slope uh, because the controller maxed out at the max temperature that we set it to. And because of that, uh, the accumulation uh, was fairly constant, but as you can see, we were able to control that, uh, and that was the deposition rate down here. We were able to control that so that if, if you stopped around here, which would be about 20 minutes, uh, it would have been right on, but because we kept it going and we couldn't get the temperature to go all the way down to zero Kelvin, uh, we actually end up getting a small overshoot of 0.7 angstroms which in all reality is completely fine since the diameter of a silicon, uh, silicon atom is about 6 angstroms. Uh, and that wasn't a problem, but it just shows that this system is a little bit harder to control and it's not quite as practical. Since we're able to control the pressure a little more easily, we have a higher deposition rate at the beginning, so our rise time is, mu is much shorter. Um, and because we're able to completely shut off the reactant feed, we don't have any overshoot. So this system was slightly more desirable in those respects. And so although we have two separate models, ideally we would combine both of them by controlling the pressure, but also controlling the, the temperature to a lesser, lesser degree, which that's a, something we could investigate further into. But overall the pressure control system is slightly better.